Well, I hope you're having a great Friday. I wanted to take an opportunity today before another great sports night here in the metro area, Toledo Glass City. We've got Jordan Strack joining me here. Jordan, I wanted to reach out to you today. So informal, but I thought, man, what a better chance to kind of pump up our audience for what's going to happen tonight. We're getting into kind of a March Madness feel, and it's February. What do you got coming up tonight? Yeah, Jeff, it's crazy, man. We're we're uh, looking at Big Board Friday tonight, and we've got, like, conference championship games all over the place. Um, some are, like, true conference championships, and some are just kind of happening because it just happened that way. Like, in the NWOEL, Wauseon and Archbold are both undefeated in the league, and they just happen to be playing each other the last game of the season, which we love. So we'll have John Monk out there tonight. Uh, the City League actually holds their tournament, so their championship game is tonight. Start against Scott. Uh, that's where we'll be doing Big Board from. Uh, we've got the NLL I champion. Stop you. I got to yeah, stop but... you right there. Start and Scott. And I have watched over the last few weeks some of the highlights. And I'll tell you what, they've got stars on each of those teams. But every time I see your highlights, I'm watching some of the guys who are the unsung heroes and maybe don't get a lot of playing time, but they're out there on the floor doing their thing. And they're, they're creating wins for these teams. Oh, for sure. For sure. And I think – you know, you look at all the, if you look at all the successful teams everywhere across our area, it's it's those unsung guys. Like, yeah, you know, you you look at Start and and Caleb Wanamaker's like their superstar, but they've got other guys. And you know, I think Start is such a cool story because um, they lost a teammate before the year started. Uh, they have been through all, so much craziness with with COVID. Uh, the mm-hmm. City League almost, you know, they they delayed their season. They've barely played the games, and now Start gets to go play for a championship tonight. So. It's those fun stories like that that are just so special. And I, I you know, we, we're so lucky that we, um, they're having a year, they're actually able to have a year. And I'm getting to see firsthand just how much all of these sports mean to everybody. You know, we, we've had the discussions, you know, when, when the health department shut everything down, you know, we've seen what it's like to take all this stuff away from these kids. And I'm seeing uh, every single day how much it means to them to be out playing. So, yeah, man, it, it, we've got a, we got a lot of stuff coming tonight. We're, we're excited for it. It might be. I'm going to call it our best big board Friday of the year. Uh, I'm putting a lot of pressure on it, but this is going to be the best big board Friday of the year. How's that? Okay. So I stopped. I got you stopped off. Uh, we, yeah. The train was rolling. The train was rolling. And we got yeah. off track. You talk city, uh, city league championship. What yeah. else is coming up? We've got, so the NLL championship is tonight. Um, North, you taking on Anthony Wayne. They're the one and two seed. They actually, for the first time ever, uh, put together an NLL tournament this year on the boys side and the girls side, just because everybody wasn't going to get to play everybody twice this year. So they said, all right, what can we do to make this exciting? And Richard Brown, the commissioner of the NLL, and I think Chuck Jaco had a lot to do with it at Perrysburg, the AD over there. They said, let's put together a tournament and they did it. And they, because of the weather, they've actually had to play three games in three days. So North and Anthony Wayne are going to be exhausted tonight, but they get to play for a championship, which is really cool. It's the first time the NLL has ever done that. Uh, the SBC is actually going to have going to be their championship tonight. Um, Norwalk and uh, Tiff and Columbian are playing. Tiff and Columbian actually beat them earlier this year. Um, and Norwalk's on. Uh, that's their only loss of the year in the league. So there, there's all sorts of good stuff. Uh, and we're, we're I mean, we're fired up for it. It's a good it's going to be a good night. That's awesome. Let's talk a little bit about the announcement that came out yesterday. I know I was excited hearing it, but the Mud Hens announced, yeah, we're going to have a season this year. Jordan, I was looking through it, and there, there are going to be some tweaks as far as safety is concerned. 1,500 fans per game. What, what kind of caught your eye about how the season's going to shake out? Yeah, it, it's going to be interesting for sure. I think, you know, it, it's, it's, going to be, it's going to be really weird not seeing, you know, over 10,000 people – packed into fifth third field this year I, I, not having a mud hen season last year was really tough for a lot of people and for a lot of reasons um i mean there there are a lot of people that were affected by it the, the bars around the town uh downtown i mean there everybody was affected by it and um only having 1500 people it's not going to be easy again this year so um i, I think i think I'm, I'm excited that there's going to be a mud hen season i'm excited that there will be some fans that are able to get in there um it's going to be good to we're starting to see things. I don't want to say back to normal because I hate the jinx things. We're starting to see things get back to a point of comfortability and we can, we can understand um, what we need to do to be safe. And I think the mud hens being outside and being able to safely put people in there. This is a huge, huge step for us downtown. And I'm, I'm excited. I'm ready to go. I, baseball season is, is one of my favorites. Fun fact. I actually worked for the mud hens when I was in high school, I worked in the clubhouse 
uh, as a 17, 16, 17 year old, I worked in the clubhouse. I was a bat boy, worked in the clubhouse. And then I actually uh, got to do their pregame show on TV when I was in college. So the Mud Hens have a really close place to my heart. And growing up, and when they were in Maumee, we would ride our bikes there. Don't tell anybody, Jeff. We would ride our bikes to, the, to Ned Skelton Stadium. In the back, there was, there was the, the wooden uh, area around the back. We would lift a board. We'd all ride our bikes, stash them back there, lift a board. We'd all run in. We'd all scatter and then meet in the bottom of the first inning somewhere. Don't tell anybody, though. We did, we did that a lot. <laughs> the old Ned Skelton Stadium. I, I, yeah, I just remember, yeah. I remember always fearing for my life walking up to the higher seats because those wood boards, maybe the one, same ones you were moving, were, were important to my safety. Um, no, I, I, I looked at it yesterday, and we were talking with Eric Gibson, general manager on the air yesterday, Jordan. And, you know, he was saying these home stands are going to be a little bit longer. So they're not three games in and out of town. It, it cuts down on the amount of travel. They're going to play six games at a time. Um, they're, they're actually adding a few more teams. They, the divisional lineups have changed a bit. So that's going to be interesting. You're going to have teams like Iowa coming in and playing the Mud Hens as well. And the, the great thing we heard yesterday, Jordan, was that you've got not just one opening day, but six opening days. And I think either Robert or Josh, our executive producer, said, well, that's probably a good thing because we don't know what the weather is going to be in a. Yeah, that's all. That's always the challenge on opening day, right? It's hit or miss on whether or not we're going to be completely bundled up or if it's going to be comfortable. Um, but like, I don't think anybody's going to care this year. Like, I, I really do. I don't think people are going to care what it's, you know, what it's going to be like, because I think people are, are starving so badly to get down there. But yeah, it is going to be weird. Like, you know, they opened the season with Omaha, a team that was in the PCL for years that we've never seen here. Um, that's going to be weird, I, I think. And yeah, that is a six game homestands to start. That's like the first thing that jumps out is, wow, a six game homestand right away. Like you're going to get real comfortable with these teams um, right off the bat. So um, yeah, it's weird. And, and, you know, there is some, there is some difficult uh, travel that, that's going to be in there because, you know, the, the Mud Hens will have to be going to Iowa and Omaha and then St. Paul. Those are things they've never had to do before. Um, you know, normally when you take your, your long trips, you're going down to Durham and then Gwinnett and things like that. Now, I mean, you're going completely different directions and it's going to, it's going to be weird. It's going to be an adjustment, but, um, major league baseball has completely overhauled, uh, the way minor league baseball will look. And it's going to be a little bit different. It's going to take a little bit of getting used to for sure. I know you've said it probably 856,000 times, but I, I hope you appreciate the fact I'm still trying to get the Big board, Charlie's Dodge, Jeep, Ram, Chrysler, big four by four. What? You got to school me a little bit more, brother. It is. It is the Charlie's Dodge, Chrysler, Jeep, Ram, big board Friday. Here's the, here's the best part though, Jeff. And is that, so I will come on the air and our 6 PM sportscast is brought to you by Jim White Honda. So sports is brought to you by Jim White Honda. And we are getting set for Charlie's Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram big board Friday. Uh, <laughs> thankfully, thankfully I've been doing this for, uh, I've been doing this for years now. And thankfully we've had the same sponsorships. So I've been able to get used to all of them. Uh, but yeah, it, it can be a, it can be a mouthful. Charlie's Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram big board Friday. Oh, and it is coming up tonight at 11. It is going to be chock full of so much great tournament, uh, pre-tournament tournament action, if you can say. Uh, the last thing I wanted to let you know about and let our viewers know about is coming up tonight at 5, I had an opportunity, Jordan, to sit down with two of our local volleyball coaches, Greg and McKenna Wright. Uh, McKenna uh, coaches out at Springfield High School. Greg is both the men's and women's volleyball coaches at Lords University. But these two, if they didn't have enough to do already, they have decided, hey, you know what? In our free time, we're going to start a podcast. And Jordan, they have started interviewing some of the great influential people around Northwest Ohio and Southeastern Michigan. And even from farther stretches, one of their guests was, was from uh, St. Louis, Missouri. So that's coming up tonight. We talked to them about what their goals are for this, why they're talking with these folks and wait until you see the guest list. It's really. Cool. Yeah, it's awesome. I actually, um, I'm going to, I'll pull the curtain back. I actually snuck a peek at your story. I went into, I went into our system. I saw that it was up there and I, I actually saw the thumbnail. I saw McKenna writes and I was like, Oh, I want to watch, see what this is. Cause I love McKenna. She's amazing. And she's such an inspiration. Um, yeah. And her story, her story is so cool. And I think people have seen it, but 
Um, yeah, I went and saw that they're they're doing a podcast. And I was like, that's pretty darn cool. I like it. So I think and I think uh, I think people will certainly want to tune in today at five and be able to watch that for sure. It's really good. Jordan, lastly, before we let people go, uh, tell us where you're going to be live tonight. Uh, I will be live tonight from Waite High School for the city championship. I'll be on at 530. Actually, at 530, you're going to hear from Robert Easter Jr. He has not fought in over a year, and he is making his return to the uh, boxing ring this weekend on Showtime. It's been a while. It's hard to believe Robert's now 30 years old, um, and and he still feels as good as ever. He is ready to go. Uh, so we talked to Robert. He's down in, he was down in Florida training. Um, so he hasn't even been around here. He actually avoided all the snow. I, I told him he was a genius for that. Uh, but he, so he's been down training in Florida. So you hear from Robert at 530. And then at six o'clock, uh, we'll get you set for Charlie's Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram Big Board Friday. We've got our athlete of the week from Elmwood. Bryce Reynolds from Elmwood. They had to play four games in five days last week. The kid went absolutely nuts. Uh, so he's our athlete of the week. We'll have that. And then, of course, Big Board is coming up tonight. Uh, I think you said it faster than you've ever said it right there, just to, just to prove a point. <laughs> Listen, Craig, it, ro- it rolls, just rolls off the tongue. Absolutely, just for some of us. Uh, Jordan Strack, he is our sports director, WTOL 11. Great to see you, pal, and I'm looking forward once again to, uh, to show, the big show coming up later tonight. Awesome. Thanks, Jeff.